you ever been with your camera in a situation where you thought, wow, I would really love to capture how dynamic the motion in this image is, you know? Say you're watching a sport game and someone um, is moving really quickly and you thought, wow, I'd really like to get that blur in just the right way. Just n not too much blur, but not too little. I want to show this motion. Well, this is all a part of something that photographers call capturing motion. And capturing motion is something that is kind of takes a little bit of experience to know how to do. Anyone can take a blurry image, but taking a blurry image that captures just what you want is really kind of a little bit of the art of photography. So in order to understand this, like we've talked about in a lot of other lessons, you need to understand the technical side of what creates motion blur, and you also need to understand the artistic side, so what you exactly want to achieve. So how about we start really quickly by reviewing something that we talked about in our shutter speed lesson and some, to some degree in our ISO lesson. We're going to talk really quickly about shutter speed. So I'm going to kind of divide our page in half here because I've got something to do over here on the other side in a little bit. We're going to talk about shutter speed. All right, so I basically divide when I'm talking about shutter speeds, I divide them up into what I would call long shutter speeds, slow shutter speeds, then there would be normal shutter speeds, fast, and then super fast, which really is probably more just something that I've made up. Not necessarily all that important to remember the super fast description. Now a long shutter speed is going to be about one second or longer, so you know up to 30 seconds plus. So you're going to have here when you're talking about a shutter speed of one second, that's like one second right there. So that's quite a long time. A lot can happen in one second when you're taking a photograph. Now when we're talking about slow photographs, I would say slow shutter speeds are somewhere between one half and I would put the border right around a fourth, a fortieth of a second. Um, so that's a pretty wide range right there. Um, it could be probably a little slower and it could probably be a little faster, but that's probably maybe a good kind of standard set of slow shutter speeds where you can get lots of motion blur. Starting around a 1 50th of a second or maybe a 60th of a second, the shutter speed sort of starts to get uh, high enough that you can actually kind of do something with it. So I would call that sort of an average shutter speed. And I would run average normal shutter speeds up to about 125th of a second, uh, depending on the usage. Um, but you'll also notice I'm going to make a little overlap here on the next, uh, the next description. A fast shutter speed can, in some situations, be 125th of a second. Sometimes um, you don't have much move in it, movement in a scene, so a 125th of a second shutter speed might be kind of fast for that situation. So here there's a little bit of overlap. And then I would take the sh those fast shutter speeds up to one thousandth of a second, which is sort of the old standard. One thousandth of a second was sort of the upper limit among um, a lot of cameras for a very long time until, um, until very recently, really, until the last two decades or so, where um, camera speeds have just really increased a lot. And now I would call those other shutter speeds, the ones that are sort of new, I would call them super fast. And those are just one one thousandth plus. And they go up nowadays even in consumer cameras up past 8,000. You even see faster than 8,000th of a second now in some consumer cameras, which is pretty darn amazing. All right. So there are, that's our review of your shutter speeds. I really encourage you to go check out our shutter speed lesson if you are a little rusty on that. We talk very a little bit more in depth about um, what shutter speeds can capture what. Now, when you want to go capture that blur in your image and you want to create a sort of a cool blurry effect in your images, you need to s kind of make some considerations. You're sitting there with your camera and you've got the situation happening in front of you and you think, okay, here are the three things I need to think about in order to capture this correctly or in order to know how to capture this correctly. So we've got one, two, and three. First of all, you're going to want to think of the speed of your subject. So we talk about this in the shutter speed lesson a little bit. A slow shutter speed is really going to be able to capture certain types of motion where some motion is too slow to be captured with that and you need a long exposure. Some things are too fast so you need a little bit higher of an exposure. Um, a really quickly moving car might blur 
with a very fast shutter speed, whereas a person who is walking might just blur with a slow shutter speed. So you just kind of need to consider exactly what um, shutter speed is best suited for the thing that you're doing, and you can do that by looking it up online or going and checking out our shutter speed lesson. You also want to consider your distance. And really, when you're talking about distance, you actually are thinking about the size of your object in the image. And we'll sh I'll show you an example of that a little bit later. But the smaller the image, um, the slower your shutter speed is going to need to be. So the, s the, s the smaller your object is in the image, the slower your shutter speed is going to need to be to capture that motion because they're not making very much motion through the, um, through the scene or through across your pixels um, inside your computer on your s or, uh, inside your camera on your sensor. So that is another thing. And the last question that you want to ask yourself, number three, is um, how much motion do you want to convey? So um, how would I write that? Let's see. Um, I'm just going to write motion and convey. So how much do you want it to blur is basically the question that you want to ask. How much do you how much do you want that person to be or that object to be completely sort of blurred out or do you want them to be just a little bit there? That's something you need to know and that also will determine how and which one of these shutter speeds you select. Let's take a couple examples now. So here is me on my bicycle. Just recently I bought a fisheye lens and I was riding home. I was so excited. I did something very dangerous and I took a photograph while I was riding down this bike path here. This image was taken at ISO 800. It was evening. It was getting really kind of dark outside. The f-stop was at 3.5. And my shutter speed, now this is the really determining, uh, the determining factor in whether something blurs, was one-eighth of a second. So one-eighth was my shutter. And you can see that it was a one-eighth of a second. I would look at this image as someone who takes a lot of photographs, and I would just know Im immediately that this was in this neighborhood. I wouldn't maybe know that it was an eighth of a second, but I would know that it was less than a fifteenth of a second, um, depending on how fast I was riding. Again, that's a question of speed. But you can see here the motion is being captured here. You know, you're losing detail. And this is also a perfect example of how proximity to something and the size of something can make a big difference. In theory, I'm moving the exact same speed through this entire frame, uh, th through this entire image, but because these cars back here are so much smaller in my frame, they blur a lot less. And as we get closer, you can see each, um, each car is blurring a little bit more. So in order to capture this scene, I knew I needed about an eighth of a second. And luckily with digital cameras, you can try out lots of different things um, and see what works for you. You can also see that that eighth of a second, my arm and the front of my bike didn't move very much according to, uh, in relation to my camera. So my camera was pretty still. I was riding on a smooth path. And you can see that my handlebar didn't flip from side to side and I didn't move my hand very much. So that is captured pretty well in focus and pretty clearly, you know, not without much motion blur. Uh, so the difference between what this part of the picture here, down here, needs in order to be tack, tack sharp and what this right here needs is very different because of the, the, the speed relationship according to the camera. It's not just how fast I'm moving, but how fast an object is moving in relation to a camera. So that's a really important thing to remember. Now here is another picture, a very different photo, and this is an image that really captures motion and freezes it. So this is, I guess you could, uh, photographers would call this freezing motion. And this is my neighbor, Amin, and he is jumping out of the window. He and his brother were playing tag in our garden the other day, and I thought, oh, this is a perfect example of capturing motion. So my ISO is 100. I'll choose a different color for the rest of this here. And my f-stop is f1.8, so I was using one of my favorite lenses. And my shutter speed. What do you think my shutter speed would be here? He's moving pretty quickly. He just jumped right out the window. Well, my shutter speed is 1 400th of a second. So 1 400th of a second is pretty fast. But still, even though it's very fast, you can see a little bit of motion blur on his foot here. Now, everything else is pretty solid. He's pretty, especially his hand was, was, must have been staying right in place. Um, 
but you can still see there's a little bit of motion blur at a 400th of a second if something is moving very fast, like M in here. But you can see the wall and everything else is totally in focus and sharp. So it makes a very big difference. Shutter speed can be, make a big difference. Can you imagine maybe what this image would look like at maybe a 30th of a second? That would be um, be a very different image. You would probably barely even be able to see him. You would just be a blue and blue and brown blur. That's a pretty pretty different image. Now here is an image taken in my neighborhood a couple months back, and I was just sort of on my way to the train station, and I saw this lighting was somehow cool, and I saw this guy with this very cool hat come around the corner, and I whipped out my camera really quickly and took a photograph. Um, this photograph was taken at ISO. This was, I had my old film camera with me, so this camera um, was I was stuck with my ISO at ISO 200. And my f-stop would have been most likely around 180, um, 1.8. I always carry that film camera with me all the time. And I'm guessing that my shutter speed was about a 30th of a second, if I remember right. It might maybe might have been down around a 15th as well. And this is, again, an important detail. You can see here the distance from me to the subject is pretty far. He's, he's pretty far away. But you can see here the motion blur of his leg, the motion blur up here. You can see this his foot is very stable, very sturdy. He's not, he's not move. That's not moving right now because it's stuck on the ground, and he's pivoting over it. But this part right here, this foot is moving, and this, and his body is kind of reaching over to to his right. And so you can see here that is the motion that I've captured. And this is a, this is an amount of blur that I really like because this makes this man kind of unidentifiable. He's sort of hard to see, but you see that his shape. He's not overly blurred or under blurred. Um, I think for this situation, it's not the most amazing photo, but it's a nice photo of the train station that I always go to. All right, and here is another example of two photos that aren't amazing, but they do capture sort of blur and about at the same time or speed. And this photo to the left here is ISO 400, uh, taken at f 2.8, and my shutter speed was a fifteenth of a second. And I need to, I really need to get better at picking good colors for the backgrounds here. One fifteenth of a second. And so you can see here that someone can move pretty far in a fifteenth of a second. Again, I'm about the same distance as I was from the guy in the train station. Um, but you can see here again, the foot that's on the ground is, is pretty stable. Everything else is sort of in motion. You can see these people back here might be moving, but because they're so far away, it's a little harder to catch that motion blur. And uh, you can see everything else in the background is pretty stable because I held the camera very, very steady. Over here to the right is a very different story. This is at a museum, and I was shooting at ISO 200. It was in a memorial for the Holocaust. My f-stop was at 1.8, and my friend here, Ingrid, is walking into the door of this memorial room, and I took the, sh the photo at about a quarter of a second. I also just happened to shake my hand when I was taking the photograph, so the camera moved a little bit. And you can see that here on every detail is just a little bit off, and I may have even been a little out of focus now that I look at it. Um, but what I like about this is the motion of her hand right here and the motion of her leg and her head. Um, these are all really interesting. I think the door is also, you can see the door bends here at the bottom right there it bends and that's just the door moving in the image actually the door wasn't really bent like that so this is just a way of capturing motion that's a little bit more a little bit more artistic it's definitely not like my favorite photograph but i like the colors and i like the motion of it and it's a impactful memory it was a very impactful place that we were at so um I would definitely, if you uh, were you, try out everything. Try out a fifteenth of a second. Try out a f quarter of a second. See what the difference is when you do that sort of thing. Now here, if you um, want to do something interesting, you can also try to capture your foreground in focus and get the background blurred. So in a lot of the photos so far, it's been the subjects that's been blurring. This is a photo from um, a telescope lab somewhere in California. And it's a long exposure where they put the camera on the body of this telescope and the top has was then moved around. And you can see the background then blurred. So this is the background blurring. You can see the desert back there where they're up in the mountains of, I think, of California. 
And so that's another thing that you have at your disposal. You can choose also to blur the background and not necessarily the thing that's in the focus. So you want to you want to find a shutter speed that says, okay, this thing in the foreground will be solid, it will be sharp, it will be in focus, and the background will be blurred. What do I need to do that? So in able in order for that to happen, the computer the camera has to move with the subject, or the subject has to stay and the background has to move. So you want to think about that um, background blur. All right, so that was your lesson about capturing motion blur and using blur as a tool in your composition. You can check out more lessons here at allversity.org.